Hello, welcome to Megger's technical support video series, Frequently Asked Questions. In this video, we will review SPY 225, specific breaker test and report overview. Let's get started. Once in the home screen of PowerDB, we're going to start by clicking the Circle Breaker Curve Library button. Then select Manufacturer Specific. For this example, I'm going to use a molded case square D breaker from the FH family, 70 amps. So we'll accept my selection. Then the software will load the TCC for this breaker, the time current curve for this specific model of circuit breaker. You can tell now that I will be able to test two elements on this breaker, my long time test and my instantaneous pickup for this circuit breaker. So let's go ahead and start with my long time test. Again, since we selected a circuit breaker from my library, I already have my frame size and the software calculated the current that I will need for this specific long time measurement. So let's go ahead and start with the phase A test. So I'll go ahead and click the play button here. Since this is the very first injection in this session, the software is asking me to confirm some of the settings for the output, the maximum time allowed, the maximum current allowed. It's indicating the test that is going to use for this particular measurement. And I can also change the tap verification current. This is the current that the unit will use in that pre-injection that is used to determine the impedance of the circuit connected to the output of the SPI so that the unit can adjust the output accordingly and inject the 210 amps in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and accept the settings. The unit will start the test. It will start by verifying the connection, finding the tab in use, and then calculate the impedance to then inject the current. Notice that I get live indications in the curve here on my timer and also time down here on phase A. Also notice that my arrow was red because it was still outside the limits allowed or defined by this TCC and it becomes green when it goes inside the limits of the curve. So I'm going to simulate a trip right there and both of my measurements are green here. At this point we're ready to change connections to phase C to our breaker and start our measurements on that phase. Same process, it will find the tab, calculate the impedance and start the test. On this case I'm going to simulate a trip outside the limits so we know how that looks in the report. Right here on my testing screen, both of my results are red. Now we'll change connections to phase B and start running our measurement. Same process, finding the tab, calculating the impedance to then start the injection. Another good feature of the software is I will get a live indication of the input voltage of the SPI. So in this case, I'm going to simulate a trip inside the limits of the curve. So now one of our phases failed. So let's look at how is that displayed in my report. As you can see, big and prominent red letters, the report is indicating that one or more of the measurements failed. So you see the plottings in the curve, as well as the numerical values in my results table at the bottom of the page. So let's say that we did some main, some corrective actions in this circuit breaker, and we want to rerun the test to assure that those corrective actions indeed uh, fix, fold or fix our failed measurement on phase C. For that purpose, we have the as found section and the as left. That is the reason we have the two columns for each phase. 
we don't want to lose our previous result because again that will be an important display in the report to tell that we actually perform some corrective actions in this breaker so again i'm ready to rerun this measurement so i will go ahead and click on the as left column for phase c the unit will run the measurement and again it will keep my previous value on the as found column so in this case i'm going to simulate the trip inside the limits so now all our, of our three phasers are within the limits specified by the manufacturer we have green there gonna simulate the contact and let's go back to our report so now all tests passed and again not erasing our previous reading where we found that phase outside the limits we still have those readings in our report so i'll go back to my test screen to switch now to the instantaneous pickup again since we selected the breaker from our library the software already calculated the current of the expected trip for this circuit breaker which is 735 amps but before we start the injection i want you to pay attention to the current meter in this section since the software will actually start the first injection in this case about 600 amps in case the breaker is actually tripping below the expected limit we don't want to miss that value and again the, the purpose of this test is to determine the instantaneous pickup so we want to know the lowest possible value at which the circuit breaker will trip in that function so again pay attention to the live current indicator up here in yellow so we're going to start with phase a again i expect the software to start around the 600 amps mark Five eighty-eight. Okay, so pretty close. Remember, this is instantaneous pickup, so the unit is doing pulse on, pulse off, and those settings you can change in the general settings for the software of the spy. We have a separate video covering all the settings that you can change in the software. Okay, so we have a, a trip on phase A. We switch connections to phase C, and we run the measurement so now we know the unit is going to start injecting 588 amps to determine the instantaneous pickup so it's doing 20 amps increments on every step and again we can change that in the settings of power db we're done with phase c change connections to phase b and we run the measurement Right, so let's now look at our report. All tests passed. Now I have my instantaneous pickup values plotted in the curve as well as my numerical values in the results table. I want to show you one more section of the software, which is the resistances table. I have access to that table clicking on this resistor icon on the toolbar. And since whenever you do these measurements on a circuit breaker, most probably you will also be measuring insulation resistance and contact resistance. If you're doing so with one of our instruments, the S1, for example, for insulation resistance, and one of our DLROs for contact resistance, you can input those results in this table manually. So let's go ahead and fill out the table. Just gonna fill out with some readings. 
158 here and 61 here and 80 here 82 and 79 I'm going to go ahead and also fill out contact resistance value to one micro ohms, 198, 199. Also notice that right now my equipment temperature is empty. So we measure our temperature and let's say it was at 37 degrees Celsius. So as soon as I accept that uh, value, the software will actually correct my insulation resistance measurements back to 20 degrees Celsius so I can compare with previous readings. So I'm going to accept these values that I enter and then I'll go back to my report to see how, how that looks like. First page is just as we showed before, but notice down here I now have a second page of my report showing both my insulation resistance readings as well as my contact resistance readings so i have a full report for this circuit breaker from here i can save the file in the powerdb native format print it directly or generate a pdf ready to be shared this concludes py 225 specific breaker test and report overview Visit the Mega YouTube channel for more videos including technical webinars, product overviews and other how-to presentations similar to this one. Contact us for questions or more information about this topic or for any question you may need for your electrical testing.